What's up guys, it's your boy Mixed by AP and I'm back with another video. As you can tell by the title, in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to mix beats. And if you're new to my channel, I teach people how to record, mix, and master at a professional level on Logic Pro X by using only the free stock plugins. And I also have lessons on Pro Tools using the more advanced plugins like Waves, Fab Filter, and more. So I have a little something for everyone, no matter what level you're at, beginner, intermediate, or expert. So if you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? Go ahead, hit that button for me so I can teach you how to be the best engineer you could be. All right, guys, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using Logic Pro X, but everything that I'm teaching you guys can be done in Fruit Loops or Ableton, no matter what you use. A lot of people use Logic to make their beats, and I'm gonna be using the free stock plugins on Logic, which everybody has automatically. But like I said, we're gonna be using EQ, which Fruit Loops comes with the stock EQ, and all these other programs have their own versions of the plugins we're using here. So it's some, it's gonna be something that you could use in, no matter what program you use. I'm teaching you guys the fundamentals of how to mix a beat, and you can use any plugins to achieve those results, right? So starting off, right off the bat, this beat I had already made, so I already arranged it. So we're gonna loop this part right here. This is just any part where all the instruments are all playing at once. And for you, if you haven't arranged your beat yet, you just loop wherever you're at. But for me, since I already arranged it, it has to be over here at the end. You wanna loop an area where all the instruments are playing because remember, we're mixing all these instruments and all these sounds together to sound harmonious and to blend together well. A lot of people don't understand the importance of mixing a beat. You could make the most fire beat, most fire rhythm, fire drums, but if the beat is not mixed right, the entire beat will actually sound off. It might be uh, peaking, which makes the quality sound staticky. So there's a lot of elements to mixing a beat. I would say that mixing the beat is probably 50% of the job because those sounds that you use, the stock sounds, you can add some reverb to them and that will add an element to the actual beat. You, If you um, make the kicks and the drums go together and they're pounding harder, or if they're more back in the background, that is also adding to the style of the beat. Is this a hard drill song or is this an R&B song? You don't want a drill mix on an R&B beat. You know, that, that's gonna, it's gonna throw off the entire beat. So learning how to mix your beat is an incredibly important, especially like sometimes you hear a beat and one instrument is throwing the whole entire thing off. So I got the loop right here. I'm gonna play it for you guys so you guys can hear what it sounds like. I just realized I don't even need to loop that much. I could just loop this. All right, so you guys heard that. The beat is, I mean, right off the bat, you see one of the most important things. We're in the red. All the instruments together are peaking, which means the beat is, is gonna lose a lot of quality because it's getting slapped down. Your speakers are slapping down the mix and it's gonna actually sound staticky. And if you've watched my limiter videos, you know that red is the worst thing that you can do as an engineer or producer. The worst thing that you could see. First thing, step one, or anything else, you turn all your instruments down. And the reason we do this is because if you're a student in my academy, you know the answer to this. The most important thing I always talk about is gain staging, right? This is step one before anything else happens. If you don't know how to gain stage, listen, you are in trouble. What we're doing with this beat is we're turning all the instruments down to zero and we're gonna start working our way up. We're gonna start um, raising one at a time. We're gonna start with the main lead sound, which is this piano, and we're gonna mix it first and then we're going to move on to the next sound. And then I'm gonna show you guys the entire process of like the steps, right? Step, the first step is always the gain staging, turn every sound down, 
Second step is start with the lead sound, the lead instrument. You mix the instruments, whether it's the bells, the pianos, the synths, no drums yet, no hi-hats, no any type of percussion yet. You only mix the sounds first because we get the sound sounding right first and then the drums need to be mixed into that. So first, that's how we, that's how we approach our mix of a beat, right? So the first thing that I do and most other producers that I watch do is they get the, the sounds sounding the way they want, right? So that means adding the reverb and the delays first. And then you add the actual mix while it's already with the effects that you wanted. So let's start bringing our piano up. Let's start at negative 20. Negative 20 is a little too low. So let's start at negative 15. Right, so that's the piano. First thing I wanna add, oop, is not the EQ yet. I want to first add a space designer, okay? That's what I like to add to my sounds. Any type of reverb, um, especially when it's um, the main sound or the background sounds. Reverb usually sounds good on most things, even if it's just a little bit, right? So. Now the piano sounds kind of how I want it, kind of the, the vibe that I'm going for. But now I wanna mix it and I wanna make sure that it's not peaking and that the elements of the piano are coming out into the mix the way that I really want them to be. And remember guys, I don't really get anything from making these videos. All I really ask is that you smash that like button for me. It really helps my channel a lot. It helps me grow and it helps me to keep making these videos for you guys, teaching you guys how to engineer. So if you could just take a second to smash that like button for me, it would really mean a lot to me and I'd appreciate it. First thing that you really add on every instrument is an EQ. This is gonna be on every single instrument, guys. That's, we don't even need to think about it. EQ on everything, everything, there's nothing to talk about. You want to put an EQ on all of your instruments. Right, so what I did with this EQ is number one, I cleaned it up. I cut the lows and I cut the highs, right? We want these pian we want this sound to be isolated in its designated zone, right? So I cleaned it up because remember the lows, the 808s and the kicks are gonna be taking up from 200 below, right? So if you have too much in this zone right here, it's gonna actually end up making it harder for your final mix. And that's kind of the same idea with the highs, right? Your hi-hats and your claps are gonna be taking up a lot of this space from 5K and above. And when you cut out the unnecessary frequencies of your original instruments and you keep it in that zone right there, then it actually leaves a lot of space for the rest of your mix, all right? So what I did was I also added a little bit um, of this um, zone right here in the 200s because I like how it fills up the entire um, sound as of right now. It fills up the entire um, area before even the 808s come in. It's filling up the ear the earphones, right? And, and I also cut a little bit of the 2K range around here just because I want to leave that space for that second instrument. 
um, that's about to come in. So that's what it sounds like right now. I'm gonna bring in this instrument right here and I'm actually gonna um, take out this instrument. I'm gonna put this to negative 15. Now we're on to the next instrument, guys. Remember, we're doing the instruments first and then it's gonna come in the, the rest of the percussion and the beat, like st stuff like that. Boom. So then, you know, I know I did a lot right there, guys, but I'm going to explain what I did. So first I added the reverb. We already went over that with the first instrument. I don't need to explain too much. Made it sound cool, made it sound the way I wanted. Then I cleaned it up with the EQ. A lot of the same stuff. Take out a lot of the lows, take out the highs, and boost frequencies in the sound that just brings it to life, brings it a little bit um, up in the mix. Just the prominent sounds of this, uh, the prominent uh, frequencies of this instrument, I just bring it out a little bit, right? That's what I did with the EQ. But then when I did that, then I played the two sounds together. And this is where everything that I'm teaching you needs to start coming together. It's not about one sound by itself. It's not about this sound by itself. It's about first mixing the sound by itself and then more importantly, playing it with the other sounds and seeing the exact level where they blend together so perfectly and they, they sound good. And one of the rules that I follow is that while I was playing around with the, the levels of these instruments, I'm looking at this final output right here this is this is all the stereo out so these are all your tracks um together and the stereo out when you when you're mixing just the sounds before any drums right you want to keep this at a negative 12 at least a negative 12 i was being a little safe with negative 14 because i like to Make, I leave to, like to leave a little bit extra. When you're mixing those original instruments, the original sounds, your leads, your synths, even your backgrounds, whatever, all of them together need to be negative 12. That's why I started the piano at negative 15, but you guys saw 
that I, w- I actually started moving it up, moving it up because I was playing them both together. And if you start the piano at negative 12 and then the your second sound at negative 12, guess what? When they're playing together, it's not going to be negative 12. It's going to be louder. So that's why I start my instruments at negative 15. And then once I, once I do the mix, I bring them together. I see how they sound together. And then I start moving the, the levels up until it's negative 12. Because now we have a lot of room in the mix to start adding in the hi-hats, start adding in the, uh, the, the claps and the drums and the kicks and the 808s, right? Now, when you're mixing your drums, you could really do it in any order. It's up to you. I like to start with like the hi-hats because it's really easy. It's a quick mix. And then you're able to just like move on to the, to the next stuff. I usually end with the kicks and the 808s because those are the loudest instruments. They take up the most space in the mix. So I like to do those at the very end because I like to mix the other instruments first. That way I'm leaving room for the 808s and the kicks, right? But it really doesn't matter what order you're in, whatever is the easiest for you, like however you like it. I start with the other instruments. I mean, sometimes I leave the clap for last. I don't know why, just sometimes I leave the clap for last because it's like I'm really leaving some space in there. I don't know. It it just all depends. It all depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to start with the hi-hats this time because it is relatively easy, right? So I'm going to do negative 15. We're bringing it up. Sometimes I, I mix it like this where I solo it out. Sometimes I mix it while I'm listening to it with the other sounds so that I'm making sure it all sounds good together. It really just depends. Um, sometimes I'll start with all the sounds together and then I'll like, just to double check, I'll mute the other sounds just to like hear it and then I'll like bring it back. It just, it, it all depends, right? For this demonstration, I'm gonna play it with the rest. Thank you. 
All right, guys, so I know I did a lot right there, but it's really a lot of the same principles, right? We are adding EQ to everything. We're cutting out all the frequencies that are not needed for this particular instrument, and we're boosting the frequencies that, the, the best frequencies in the sound. And if you don't really know what frequencies you're supposed to be looking for, what frequencies are you trying to make sound better? Um, I do have a lot of resources. This video is really just going over the fundamentals of mixing a beat. But if you really want to go deep, deep, deep into EQ and compressing and stuff like that, I have a lot of free resources on my website. I have free templates. I have a free masterclass that you guys can watch. And of course, if you need extra, extra help, I have my academy and I have my mentorship program where I sit down with you on Zoom and I really walk you through it from start to finish. So if you do need extra help with that, you can go to my website, mixbyap.co, and you'll definitely receive whatever you need. Because I know I'm going a little fast in this video, guys, but if I was to break down every little thing, this would be a five hour tutorial, you know? And that's why it's on my website and not on YouTube. But I do have those five hour, 10 hour tutorials, literally just breaking down each little part on my website if you do need that kind of help. So I did the hi-hat, I did the open hat. And one thing that I like to do with my open hats is I do the EQ first. And then afterwards, I add a little reverb just to kind of like give it a little tail and, and, and kind of adds a little ambiance to the to the final sound of the hi-hat. If you did watch what I was doing, I started off with one reverb and I put a lot and then it just was, like I said, it was sounding too much. So I was just bringing it back, bringing it back and adding less and less until it was so quiet that you almost can't even hear the reverb, but you can, if that makes sense. It's so quiet that the reverb is not noticeable, but it's there. To everyone with engineer ears, you hear, oh, there's, there's, that's what's making the hi-hat sound full and, and kind of like it's surrounding you. Um, that's what I did. But I also don't want the reverb to be too much to where it's distracting, right? To where you hear that there's like something on the, on the open hats, right? So that's, that's kind of the trick that I use. Um, enough to make a difference, but not enough to distract. That's the rule right there. Now, what I did with the flaps and the snare was a lot of the same stuff, guys. It's the EQ on everything. Um, usually, I'll add a, lot, a little bit of compressor, but like I said, in this video, I'm going a little quick. I'm just showing you guys the, the most important things. So the clap is sounding good. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of space because at the end, remember, we need to leave space for the drums. I, I did that and I left some room and now we're gonna bring in the kicks in the 808s.
kind of have the kicks and the 808s, a lot of things with the mix and the beat, guys. One thing that I want to tell you is that if you noticed, I was mixing the um, hi-hats and the open hats kind of together. Those are instruments that exist in one realm of the mix, right? Those are the highs. So you want to always mix those together because they're supposed to complement each other. They're supposed to work together in that and, and serve that, that greater purpose for the, the hi-hat uh, family, right? So the claps and the snares. If you saw, guys, I was kind of mixing those together. I was, I was going back and forth with, with these two at the same time because obviously those are claps, snares, those go together, right? And at the beginning, remember, we did the instruments, the main instruments, the piano and the, the background pluck, right? Those are supposed to be working together in tangent, right? So now, last but not least, the kick and the 808 are supposed to work together. So that is the final puzzle piece of this mix, right? The kick and the 808 are supposed to be mixed to work together. So this is an extremely valuable industry secret that I'm about to give out. When you're mixing your 808s and your kicks, you want to pull up the 808 EQ, okay? And then you also want to pull up the kick EQ at the same time, okay? So if you notice, both of these have a boost. The 808 I boosted at 60.5, 3.5 decibels up, right? And I boosted the kick 200 hertz, 5 dBs, right? So what you do if you really want these to sound harmonious is you actually invert the boost on the, on the, the 808. What you boosted on the kick, you invert it on the 808. And then what you boosted on the 808, you invert it on the kick. So let me do that right now for you guys. Right, so the 808 around I did 200. Right, so this is 200. Oh, sorry, 200, and this is a 0.98 on the other one. And instead of plus five, we're actually going to do minus five. Okay, now on the kick, we boosted the 808 60. Right, so this is going to be 60. We're going to do it 1.5. And instead of boosting it, we're actually going to deduct 3.5. So do you guys see what's going on right here? We are boosting it on the 808. And where we boosted it on the 808, we are deducting on the kick. And what we boosted on the kick, we're deducting on the 808. And that makes these blend together perfectly. And it, it leaves the space for the opposite uh, instrument. That makes sense. So now let's listen to it with the with the new mix. sounds a hundred times better than what we had before. All the instruments are working together now. They're all in their respective zones of the mix. Does that make sense? The beat, um, we mix the hi-hats together. They're working together and they're in this zone. We're mixing the, the kick into the, the 808 and that's taking care of the low zone, right? That, that Those two have to coexist, which means that they, they're in the same area but we don't want them fighting over the same space, right? The kick and the 808. What we did there at the end was ensuring that they each, the kick and the 808, don't conflict. They have their own areas where they're able to not uh, fight over the same space, if that makes sense. We did it with the clap and the snare, right? So now all the instruments are all spread into their zones and they're working together and it sounds harmonious right? But we're not done yet. The final thing we're going to do is on this stereo out, on your final stereo out track, you're going to go down to dynamics and we're going to add a limiter to the final output. 
And this limiter is actually going to give you a little more space if you really wanted to crank the, the kick up a little more or the 808 up just a little more. Because remember, we don't want this going plus two red, but the limiter is actually going to prevent that. And that way, we actually have, you know, let's give us a 0.3 dB output and let's play it. Perfect. If you guys don't know what I did right there is I added the limiter and that allows us to not go in the red at all, right? But while the limiter was on, I actually pushed the limit a little bit with some of these other sounds. And I started to see like where I can add a little more so that you can hear the slap a little more, right? The, the slap clap. So I raised the slap a little more. And then what I did was I raised the hi-hat a little more and we're still good. We're still good in terms of um, not being in the red. And I raised the instruments until I could make sure that I heard every instrument clearly, but at the same time, making sure that they're not conflicting with each other. That's the important part, that's the trick. So you wanna play around with these levels, raise it, lower it a little bit, push the limits to make sure, you know, the kick is really prominent if that's what you want or make sure that the clap is very prominent if that's what you want, um, or lower the hi-hats if that's what you want. All that stuff is important. A lot of times people even throw a little EQ on the final, but I don't see a point in that. Now, ideally, you wanna add compressor and that helps you push the limits even more to make the sound be able to punch out more, but this was a really quick tutorial, guys. I don't want this to be a two hour tutorial. If we were to get into compression with every one of these sounds, it would just take too long. But like I mentioned earlier, I do have hundreds of hours teaching this stuff, going into the, the actual compression of each instrument on my website and in my academy, if you do need extra help with that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching this week's video. I hope you learned a lot. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to keep teaching you guys everything I know about mixing and mastering to help you become the best engineer you could possibly be. And as always, guys, I'll see you in next week's video. I'm out.